my conduct. Understood? Oh, yeah. Understood here? Yeah. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Understand? All right, touch him up. Just when you think you've seen everything, it turns out you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> what are we going to see now? Oregon authorities choosing to bring in veteran Joe Cortez. The referee this one. Cortez now a regular, of course, in the state of Nevada after having moved there from New Jersey a few years ago. Vargas usually starts tactically, builds from a slow pace, trying to find his opportunities to land power punches as the fight goes on. Right, going right at him. Winky Wright, in one of his better efforts a couple of years ago against Bronco McCart, threw 48 jabs per round. So you expect that Winky bring up, bring will try up. to get the right jab going and control the early action with it. Vargas insists he has no technical problems with southpaws, pointing to his experiences against Raul Marquez. He said that if he could hit Pernell Whitaker in the gym when he sparred with him, he suspects he could hit right. He hits him right there with a left hand. And a right uppercut that followed behind it. First big combination of the bout for Vargas. Vargas to the body. And one thing he promised was rough body punching of the kind he says Wright has never tasted. Right, blocking that right-hand lead with his gloves. Already there's an abrasion beside the right eye of Ronald Winky Wright. He insisted to us that he'd never been cut. Vargas with the uppercut. Second one was blocked, first one landed. Crowd chanting Vargas, Vargas, Vargas. Left hook to the body. Right comes back with his own right hook to the body. Uppercut by right. They're trading shots from close range from time to time. Vargas regarded as the more authoritative puncher. There's a vicious right uppercut to the middle of the midsection by Vargas. Southpaws usually don't fight this aggressively. Winky Wright has fought abroad so many times that he knows he has to fight aggressively to get decisions. And he is fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vargas. Interesting choice by Wright. A lot of us thought he might try to be more elusive. You see Vargas busting his left right through the middle of Wright's guard. A mark of Fernando's strength. But Wright, well-balanced, looking... Here, ever since the beginning of his amateur days, telling Wright that he thought he had beaten Vargas to the punch in round number one. Winky Wright, not scared to trade in close quarters with Fernando Vargas. And returning the fire to the body. Chopping right hand across the top by Wright. Vargas manages to land a left hook. They're landing some heavy stuff here. Right with a right hand right on the jaw of Vargas. They're testing each other right here. And Winky Wright is making a statement that you're not going to drive me off. You're not going to take the initiative against me. He is, re he is really making a bold statement against Fernandez. Absolutely. Vargas trying to land with the right hand to the body. Right with that broad, well-balanced base, firing his jab and trying to back Vargas up. Even Yori Boy Campus couldn't back Vargas up. And here comes Vargas moving forward with the body shots again. Right with his hands held high, yet still throwing enough punches. Landing at a pretty accurate rate, or so it would seem in this round. But if Vargas 
just expected right to. Four punch combination by Fernando. Vargas. Each punch landed. And Vargas expected Wright to go side to side, back up, and try to be elusive against him. He must be surprised to see what he's facing here. Uh, sparring with Pernell Whitaker will not prepare you for this. No way. On the other hand, if you had told Vargas before the fight that Wright would do this, I'm sure Fernando would have said, great, bring it on. I want him to come to me. Still, Wright seems to have thrown him back just a little bit with the unexpectedness of this tactic. And there's a hard right hand landed off the front foot by Winky Wright. Vargas a little bit low with the body punch. Joe Cortez let him get by with it. Uppercut by Wright. Hard right hand to the body. Vargas partially blocked across the top with the right hand lead. Vicious right to the body by Vargas. Wright answers with the same thing. It's a fight in there as round two comes to a close. You're standing too much in front of him. I want your boxing. Don't, don't try to prove no point, Joe. I want your boxing on them toes. Don't stand still. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Relax. Put your win. Think about nothing, not the fight. I want you fainting, jabbing, moving. You're laying inside too much, all right? We don't want this guy to score, man. He is right now going to the body. Good shot to the ribs. Later in the round, Vargas, a left, a right, another left. Now, you heard in the corner of right, they were telling him, don't try to move any point, start to box him. Yeah, Dan Birmingham, his trainer, obviously as surprised as we are to have seen Wright standing in front of Vargas in that round. Nevertheless, on Letterman's card at one in the round, you might have seen the CompuBox numbers that had him throwing a couple punches more and landing six punches more than did Vargas. So numerically, at least, round two looked like a good one for Wright. But his trainer, Dan Birmingham, said, I want you to box. And still, Wright comes out and stands in front of Vargas and trades. Good combination by right there. Vargas unable to get off. This seems a little out of character for Wright. You wonder if he can sustain it. suggestion that Vargas might come in impatient for the knockout goes by the boards as he starts out with cautious patience and tactical thinking as has been the case throughout his career. Uh, he says I train scared. No matter who his opponent is he trains as though he's, he's going to be fighting Ray Robinson. They trade shots to the body again. Round three has so far been a tactical affair. Not a lot of leather landed on either side. Now Wright trying to step in and take the initiative again. Vargas comes back with a right to the body. Wright misses with a swinging right hook. Triple uppercut by Vargas. The right is right back on top of him. Oh, watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Let's go. Cortez, mindful of the southpaw versus conventional fighter confrontation, warning both fighters to watch their heads. This is a very, very fast-paced fight early on. Uppercut landed for Vargas, snapped Wright's head back. Wright misses with the chopping left, but comes back with a right hook. Vargas with a straight right up the middle. Wright returns the fake. Right now, we see Vargas has been investing more in a body attack, and now he goes to the head. And Wright trying to answer every thunderous Vargas shot with one of his own. It's becoming a slugfest as they come down the stretch of round three. Minor swelling outside the right eye 
of Vargas. Vargas trying to use those uppercuts to bust right out of his defense. To 50 jabs per round. In round three, throws 72 punches against Vargas. Only 25 of them jabs, 47 power shots. Vargas landed 24 out of 67. Interesting, though, that they're fighting a tough, aggressive inside fight, and it's Wright who's choosing to make it that way. Right hand lead for Vargas. And they're swelling under the left eye of Fernando Vargas. And Vargas begins to fight with a greater sense of urgency, firing those uppercuts and coming back with hooks. Right hand lead for Vargas. Momentarily backs right up. Winky gets on the move and comes straight back inside again. Right lands an uppercut. Comes back with a right hook. Vargas's left eye swelling precipitously as this round goes by. And there's a vicious right hand by Vargas. Vargas is landing up the cleaner hard blows. But Wright is right with him. He's very busy. And piling up points. And Cortez allows Wright to twice crack Vargas on the hip. That's something that can immobilize a fighter over the course of a bout. Straight right hands up the middle, starting to do big damage for Vargas in this round. And another right cross and a left hook to the body. And now Fernando begins to land three and four punches at a time. And Wright's strategy of standing close to Vargas and trading begins to look a little hollow. is just tearing him up inside. Wright, Wright is in amazing condition to take this kind of punishment. He's been a pro for nine years. He's always been a junior middleweight, which speaks well of his conditioning and his, and his will, and he's traveled all over the world to fight. And he is really taking some murderous body punches here. But the big power difference in Vargas' favor begins to show up here in the fourth round. As he repeatedly rips right with power shots in close combinations, left hook, right cross, straight right hand leads, uppercuts, body shots, the last minute of the round, a big Vargas punching display. Okay, let's get let's give him some water. He's tired already. The other guy's tired. Yo, man. Body shots are killing him, baby. You gotta step around him. You alright? Huh? You okay? He's fine. That's all he had. He's uh, he's yours now. He's all he's got. He's tired as low. Okay. Come on, you're winning this fight. Box, Look for that straight left hand sometimes, too. Good jab, straight left hand. Here they are in slow motion. A good left hook by Vargas. Can Wright sustain this pace? Does he have to start boxing more, as his corner is urging him to do? But after the body shots he's taken from Vargas, can he box more? That'll be part of the question as the fight progresses. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through four? Hey, Jim, before I give my score, where's the Tiger? Uh, I got it two to two, 38-38. I got it all even. Jim, I'm going to tell you something. I thought Winky Wright stood right in there, staked Vargas' face, and won rounds two or three clearly. But Fernando came back with that big fourth round. This is a great slugging match, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's just a matter of who gets in more clean shots. Vargas looking very strong to this point. I have Vargas three rounds to one, but I agree with Harold that that uh, third round could have gone to right. And 
with regard to the Tiger comment, Harold, producer Dave Harmon points out, dying's easy, comedy's hard. <laughs> Round five, Fernando Vargas trying to bust through Winky Wright's guard with power punches again. Now there is a low blow for which Cortez elects to stop the action for a moment and warn Vargas. Winky Wright continues his strategy of backing Vargas up, staying right in front of Fernando, and trading with him. Doing much better with that so far in the fight than most of us would have suspected could be the case. But it's a dangerous strategy. How long can he live with it? With his corner, asking him to box and move. Right, sticking his right hand into Vargas's face twice as Fernando tries to mount the attack again. Body, body, body. Fernando trying to take Wright's legs away. It's amazing that a fighter of Wright's caliber could materialize from St. Petersburg, Florida, where there hasn't been any professional prize fight. Nine years as a professional, 39 wins, two losses, 24 KOs, the only two losses to Harry Simon and Julio Cesar Vasquez. Nine years ago in the Olympic Festival in 1990, Wright won the title in the 139-pound weight class, beating the illustrious Stevie Johnston. World champion now at 135 pounds. So he's been in against quality plenty of times before. Ten seconds to go in the fifth round, and Winky Wright has regained some of the momentum he had lost in a big five. Winky Wright throwing 36 and landing 15 of them. So the fifth was a much more Winky Wright type round. But nevertheless, Letterman, seduced by the Vargas power punching, gives it to Fernando. But Wright delivering more of what we expected would have been the game plan in the fifth round. Now they're swelling around both of Winky Wright's eyes. They're swelling under both of Fernando Vargas's eyes. And well, there should be with the kind of leather they've been trading in this one. In nature, Tigers may not have any natural enemies, but in the ring, they do. last week, Larry. Winky Wright is going to back Fernando Vargas up round after round. I probably would have said it's a suicide mission. But he's doing reasonably well with it as we approach the midway point of the bout. Wright coming back with a combination as Vargas throws the one right-hand lead. Wright beginning and finishing the action in the exchanges here in the sixth. What a professional effort so far by the previously little-known Ronald Winky Wright. As you said, Larry, this is the kind of guy mandatory challenges were made for. Right. And I also said that this is not the kind of guy that young Titleists would fight if they had a choice. So Fernando Vargas getting a stiff test so far as we approach the halfway point of this scheduled 12 round 154 pound title defense for Vargas who has 17 knockouts and 17 fights coming in. He was so happy when his previous title defense against Raul Marquez went all the way to the 11th before he got TKO and he said maybe people will understand now that I don't train just to fight six rounds. taking more hard punches from Winky Wright than he took from the much more well-known Marquez or Yori Boy Campus in his title-winning effort a year ago. Half 
halfway through, and it's anyone's fight. by this jab. He can't get by this jab. Vargas's mom, Marta, looking fairly concerned over there and urging her fighter and her son. Right, effective with his jab. Follows with a short, crisp left hand. Right, well, now go ahead. Well schooled, well conditioned fighter. Right, Excellent. Look at how even those numbers are through round six. Anyone's fight. Right with tiny edges there, statistically, in the fight. Now Vargas hoping to respond to his mother's exhortations. I'm out with a big seven. The Letterman card, even through six. become accustomed to having in the three years of the boxing after dark telecast. Almost four years now. Vargas, very satisfied to be the counter puncher here and being particularly effective in the first minute of this round. Interesting kind of fight for Fernando Vargas. Well, just with a hard right hand. Right, seemingly momentarily stunned by the right, now gets back into his posture and goes back to trying to lead rather than follow. Vargas takes a right hand from right and another looping right over the top. Rinky Wright said coming in that he thought there were holes in Vargas's defense, and he has found them, landing repeatedly against the more celebrated fighters. Hard right hand by Vargas lands Back to the body, one, two, three times. the kind of fight which further underlines Fernando Vargas's image as a throwback an old-time fighter as you said Larry like something out of a 30s movie yeah you don't want to see a young fighter get into the, too many of these wars just be 22 on next Tuesday and he is in a war now and it's a war for survival Winky right, stunning Fernando Vargas with his ability to stand toe to toe and trade with him, giving as good as he's getting. At the very least, both of those records are in jeopardy. In round seven, CompuBox numbers, Vargas 25 out of 77, right 19 out of 61 of 44 connects. Between the two fighters, only five of them were jabs. It's a power-punching extravaganza. Not exactly what we expected. Winky Wright, from round one to round seven, simply hasn't boxed as much as you thought he might, and has slugged a lot more than you thought he might, and has done well with it. by Vargas. Wright still stalking. Backing Vargas up. 
round after round. Vargas content to counter, as Larry pointed out. And once again, getting comfortable with it. Wright's punch is making contact. Vargas's punch is doing more damage. fans in the crowd nervous not having heard much about Winky Wright they might have expected their man to score one of his patented easy knockouts by now it's just right hand to the body by Vargas Wright snaps Vargas's head back with counter right hand of his own Vargas back with a one, two, three. Ike Corte has come over from Ghana to watch this fight, hoping to fight Vargas in his next fight. I'm sure he is wondering what's going on here. Let it go, let it go, let it go, please, step back as well as trying to go to school on how Wright is fighting Vargas. Duarte with his brilliant jab would make a fascinating matchup against the power-punching Vargas. But who knows? Maybe by the end of the evening, this title belongs to Winky Wright. It's not out of the question. Cortez wipes the ring dry. How do you have it scored? Okay, okay Jim. 77, 75, five rounds to three. Right, Ronald Winky Wright. Jim, I'll tell you something. I think the challenge of Winky Wright is just walk through Fernando Vargas in round six, seven, and eight. He takes Fernando's best shots. He gets off first and he walks him down. He takes it right to him. The effect of aggressive and getting into better shots. Fernando has got to come forward and just take the pressure away. Winky Wright walking right through him. Larry, how do you have it? I have Vargas ahead slightly. Meanwhile, as you heard Vargas' co-trainer, Roger Bloodworth, say gut check time. We could not help but reflect on the fact that two weeks ago, Bloodworth saw gut check time for Andrew Galata, his heavyweight. And when they checked, they found no gut. Well, they're not going to have that problem here. What they have a problem with here is, is that Winky Wright has just fought a wonderful fight, is seizing this opportunity and doing everything possible with it. Who is the famed animal trainer, Frank Buck? Right now, he is doing some training with Fernando Vargas. In the modern era, the famed animal trainers are Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> Slightly different than Frank Buck. Marlon Perkins. Jack Hanna. 
Argus trying to train Winky Wright. So far without great success. Minutes to go in round nine. Fernando gets a chance to double up with the uppercut and does so. This is with the left hook over the top. Right, despite continued swelling around both eyes, knocks Vargas' mouthpiece out with a straight left hand. Fernando says, come on. Right, smiling, sticks his right hand into Vargas' unprotected mouth. Fernando comes back with a counter right of his own, and Cortez stops the action there. Interesting. Cortez is supposed to wait for a lull in the action. That was, at best, a brief lull. Must have felt like a rude awakening for, Mando, for Fernando Vargas to feel that mouthpiece fly out of the ring. Well, two weeks ago, we saw Michael Grant in danger of losing his much-celebrated status as the supposed heir apparent in the heavyweight division. And Grant, trailing so badly on the scorecards going to the tenth that he would have lost the fight if it had been completed, knocked out Andrew Galani. Vargas may be facing almost in Vargas's corner. The rising urgency in the voice of our interpreter, Ray Torres, as he repeated Eduardo Garcia's comments. You gotta throw a lot of combinations. You gotta throw them fast. You've gotta go out and throw a lot of punches. So they want to see a less measured, more frenzied effort now from Fernando Vargas as he goes into the last three rounds of the fight, perhaps trailing on the scorecards. Certainly, if Letterman's scorecard is a guide, he's in danger. Down three points on Harold's card. Vargas going to work on the body, trying to put punches together. Winky Wright standing in front of him, and you heard Wright's trainer, Dan Birmingham, say, three-round amateur fight. You've been through this before. said no three of them were slips and the lot the two knockdowns were as much from exhaustion as anything certainly Vargas is a hard puncher and has not been able to come close to putting right down and he's mounting a rally here and he's gonna have to fight the next two rounds just like this right beginning to hold a little bit more than in the early rounds as Vargas tries as Larry says to mount the rally that might save him the fight. Body shot by Vargas. Left hook lands upstairs. Double uppercut. Right comes back with a little right hook. Vargas keeps firing. Uppercut, body shot. Busting right with power punches in the middle of the ring. Vargas seizing the momentum. to you, so...
There's Ike Bazooka Quarte, Ghanaian star, looking to move up from 147 to 154 and perhaps to fight Fernando Vargas this coming spring. Requires that Vargas pull out a victory here. Did you see the CompuBox number? 99 punches by Vargas in the 10th round. Landing 34 of 84 power shots. That's a brilliant rally. He might need two more rounds just like it. fight it's not about boxing it's about conditioning it's about will it's about fighting it's about fighting and what a fight by winky Wright. winners he's made a name for himself tonight straight right hand flush by right right slowing down the bar Valley going back to his jab, boxing and moving a little bit. Something we expected to see a lot more of. He seized the initiative early by coming out and trading unexpectedly with Vargas. It served him well through most of the fight. Right up on his feet and moving in the 11th. Vargas not getting the chance here to throw 99 punches as he did in the 10th. Vargas is doing, uh, uh, Wright is doing more movement here, fighting more as we expected to see him early, making Vargas come after him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go, come on, guys, come on. Smart tactics at this stage of the fight. The other 154 pound champions are Jorge Castillejo of Spain and Olympic gold medalist David Reed. Reed attempting to put together a title defense against Felix Trinidad this coming spring, but that is contractually challenged right now. Vargas tired and slowed down a little bit in the eleventh. You gotta pull fast. You gotta put pressure on him. You gotta throw the combinations. You gotta throw everything in this round. You have to win this round, Fernando. You can't stand and look at him. You have to hit him. You have to hit him. Hey, watch the low blows, Joe. But you gotta punch, but be careful, okay? What a clean round, guys. Okay. Bust him, be first, be first. And when he's backing up, we attack him with that jab, because he can't get set. We got it. We need this round, and we need it to be a clear round with the combinations. He, he, won't, he won't touch you if you throw the combinations. Good jab. Be first. Every time he's in range, okay? Last round, we'll touch him up. Copy yeah. box numbers in the 11th fairly equal. Vargas 22 out of 53, Wright 16 out of 54. Harold, how do you have it scored coming to the last round? Jim, 106, 103, Winky Wright. I thought he pulled out the 11th, but the big rounds for Winky is 6, 7, 8, 9, when he clearly up punched Fernando Vargas. He just will not let Fernando Vargas square up in front of him. He keeps moving away. Vargas trying to get right in front of him. Can't do it. So at least on Harold Letterman's card, Fernando Vargas needs another knockout. His 18th in 18 professional fights to hold on to his title. And you heard Vargas's instructions. Throw combinations, unload everything you've got in this round. Because he is from South Carolina. 
California and Mexican American. Vargas is constantly compared to Oscar De La Hoya. This is the kind of situation in which on two or three occasions we have seen De La Hoya close the show authoritatively and pull out the fight. Can Vargas do the same in an equally dramatic 12th round? This is a much closer fight even than those fights, I believe. And this 12th round probably will decide who wins the fight. Vargas slips on a wet spot and goes down, even while landing a three-punch combination against Winky Wright. So, they touch gloves. Minute and a half to go. A tiring Vargas misses with the left foot. Wright stands in and fires his jab again. Vargas trying to bust through with combinations. High drama in Lincoln City, Oregon. Unexpected pressure for the 154-pound superstar, Fernando Vargas. Vargas throwing and landing more than right now. One minute to go. Good combo right right. Vargas momentarily unable to find him. Hold ahead, hold ahead. Let's go, hold ahead, Don. Let's go. through the harder punches or the challenger Winky Wright who unexpectedly dictated the flow of the fight. Vargas has won this last round I believe. I think so too. And it will all depend on a few close rounds early in the fight which way did they go. For the first time in his professional career Fernando Vargas is forced to go the distance. Did he also lose for the first time? We're about to find out. box numbers in round 12. Vargas landed 30 of 85. Winky Wright only threw 25 punches in the 12th round. Hard to imagine any judge giving the closing round to Wright. Harold, your final card. Okay, Jim. 115-113. Seven rounds to five. Rattled Winky Wright. It was a Philadelphia fight all the way. Winky Wright put more pressure on him. He took a right to Fernando unexpectedly. He had punched him. Jim, he deserves this fight. I think the challenger now becomes a champion. Close fight, but Winky Wright just outworked him. You know I won that fight. The three official judges, Deborah Barnes of New Jersey, Dave Hess of Dubuque, Iowa, Jim Howard of Oregon. We've seen Barnes and Hess before. Howard, the Oregon judge, an unknown quantity to us. And the ultimate decision rests with those three. You heard challenger Winky Wright's trainer Dan Birmingham tell him three rounds ago that he had already won the fight going away. I have to suspect it's closer than that. Vargas, alert enough to put in a pop for his hometown. Despite the strenuous trial he's been put through here. Ike Quarte waiting nervously. Larry Merchant's scorecard was a draw. The boxing beautifully. Beautifully. Can't take it from me. And here's the final decision. Let's go to ring announcer Mark Barrow. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the three judges at ringside. Judge Dave Hess scores the bout 114, 114, a draw. Judge Jim Howard sees it 115. 113 and judge deborah barnes scores it 116 112 to the winner and ibf
junior middleweight champion of the world, ferocious Fernando Vargas. Vargas. Be in a situation where he's looking for one.